apologies, demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! But... how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Well, what's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times, but liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. All right, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. Wait a minute, did that answer count? Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? Why would that be? <laughs> See, Silver and Malus? I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, Demoiselle. I too think that the Traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. And if that can be done, boss, then... Right, that's quite enough, Malus. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with flying colors. Now, I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Wait! Since when did we become assistants? Mm hmm? Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant, sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. Hmph! That's more like it. Far be it from me to brag, but I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. You're quite the talker, aren't you, mister? And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. I have nothing to add. Oh, alrighty then. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Linny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks!
that no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register. Ah. No, we're not leaving. We're representing. Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes. After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspect. So the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time. I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I did not abandon my post. And I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. Alright, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and we'll be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Huh? Below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Huh. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. Oh, so there was a passageway under the magic box! <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? 
the box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. I see. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley, all while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Right! You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes, and no one can tell who's who. <laughs> and that's my favorite part of this trick. Only Lynette and I can perform it. So that's how it all worked! Wow! Every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last! Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. We really don't know how that happened. If not for that interlude... This would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime. So Linny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. I'll escort them back up. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air, you know. Thanks, everyone. We're counting on you. a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. The floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which, why would there be water here? Oh! Hi, my nose! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? Uh, 
that can't be. The trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. Let's note this down too and think about it later. that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing, right? Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Right! And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Ugh, this is so confusing! Paimon doesn't want to be a detective anymore! It seems someone could fit through here. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, the space would be too narrow. But there are no other ways in or out of here. Oh, you're right! Let Paimon write that down. We're just about done investigating down here. Yes, let's head back up. Well, we've ascertained the state of the crime scene. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. Seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the Opera House's basement. The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then! You know, like the kind you usually see in novels! Hmm... The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. In other words, the charges are very likely to be upheld unless we make some considerable progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. That's right. This is how indemnidium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the oratrice. 
To put it simply, it's as if the Oratrice has its own will, and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on button of a leg called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Huh? Why? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. Whoa, whoa! There's no need for that! Paimon thinks they have a point! That said, are they providing food? Of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is... Any guarantee of balanced nutrition? In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's fa- <laughs> Miss Desserts, too. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Just kidding! Just kidding! Paima will still do her best, even... Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. Wait, you're carrying a portable stove with you? Yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever the fancy strikes her. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. You'll get to taste my awesome snacks soon enough. These three are quite the interesting group. Even better now. Paimon can't stop drooling. From the way you had these two guys carrying all that stuff around, Paimon thought you'd have them do more during the baking process. But you ended up doing the entire thing by yourself. Beating the egg whites, grinding almonds, everything. I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. Aren't you worried about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg whites, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Anyway... Give these a try, fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Only three? Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. All 
right then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? The flower vase and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel, resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... <sighs> True. None of the clues we've found thus far support the existence of this third person. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guards said that she has never had any dealings with the magic troops' members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing, though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! <laughs> they are my specialty, after all. And I see you've already had five of them. <laughs> what? Five? Oh, that can't be right! Paimon only counted three! Honest! Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Uh, no, no! Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count! Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough! Wait! Even you don't believe Paimon?! Oh, how could you?! If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn into stone in her stomach! <laughs> All right, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Malouse, set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And I have the egg, sugar, and almonds. Uh, well, this really is your hobby, huh? Well, that's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet. But we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. It would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. Alright, thanks for your help, and for the snacks! <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malus, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. It's time to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Oh, it's probably going to be a long and difficult case. <laughs> There's no point in worrying about that now. We just need to prepare. Here, take Paimon's notes. They should help you review the situation. 